Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. It is the Friday before week eight, and we are doing our regular NFL segment of Into the Weekend with Bet DSI, the very popular show that we do with Brent, the headlines manager at DSI Sportsbook, where he gives us a, a little, little quick glimpse into the uh, notable betting action that he's taken from the upcoming NFL card. Brent, thanks for being back with us. Good to be with you, Peter. All right, let's start with, uh, with Indy Pitt, right? This game jumped out at me and then everyone else that I spoke to as kind of a game. It seems like everyone's on Indy. I heard one opinion on Pitt. That was from a comment uh, on YouTube. But other than that, seems like everyone's on Indy. Last week, I had the same kind of feeling. You told us that the, that the Sharps actually came in on, uh, on Cincinnati, and in retrospect, you know, that seems like it was wrong. Uh, this week, first of all, is the public way over Indy? I'm assuming they are. And uh, are the Sharps responding at all? Yeah, no, I mean, this one, I mean, the, the public is all over Indy as well on this one. I mean, my count's really heavy on this. It's like it's like 8-1 to one in terms of the count. My money's about the same. So it's all one-way action here. 3 minus 20 is where we are right now. Took a ton of money on, on Indy when it was just 3 flat and stuff like that. But nothing sharp is on this game at all. I'm sitting at 49 on the total. Nothing of note that way either. But just a ton and ton of volume. Like when counts get up to eight to one on one side, that's that's real big at the start of the week. All right, and so you know, let me just quickly ask you about because the indie lines have had me scratching my head a little bit uh, this year. You know, about three weeks ago, you told us that uh, the sharps were all over Indy minus three at home against Baltimore, and that turned out to be a, a very sharp side. And then last week, the line seemed off. In retrospect, it was. And here this week, it seems a little bit off again. So when the odds makers set this line, I mean, you, you told us before that that they're setting it mostly to uh, to attract um, equal action on both sides, and obviously. In this case, they got it wrong. So are they saying that that's okay? If it's lopsided in favor of Indy, we think that Pitt's the right side. I mean, what gives, uh, you know, these people who feed you the lines? Are you thinking to yourself, uh, you know, next week are you going to say, uh, you know, you guys are wrong on the line you fed us with Indy? The thing is, the, the initial line when it comes out, you're looking at balancing action. You're trying to say, okay, what's the number that's going to do that for me? And, I mean, sometimes you're, you're, you're bang on, and sometimes the lines can move a lot during the week and it come back to where, you, you know, you open up in the first place. A lot of things can happen, you know, and this is one of those cases where you're looking at a, a Pittsburgh team who gets, you know, gets respect, whether mm -hmm. how good that they are or not. Couldn't, you know, can't really answer that question, perhaps. They're sitting at four and three, so they're not like a great team. They're not looking like a great team. But again, Indy's on the road, which always factors in. I mean, you figure home field's worse. You know, if this were on a neutral field, what would the line be? Six I don't know. Yeah. Seven. I mean, yeah, so maybe the line's not off, seeing as though Indy's on the road. Yeah, sure. So, but so basically what you're saying is that uh, the, the initial uh, goal of, the, of setting this line where it was, when we talk about the anatomy of a line, was to roughly get equal action, and, and, and that, so that in retrospect the line was, was, was a little bit at least off. Yeah, right now, I mean, like I said, my count's about 8 to 1 in favor of Indianapolis, and then if it ends up yeah. that way as well, or we have to move all the way up to 4 or something like that, and Indianapolis uh, absolutely blows them out, you know, we might make a phone call and say, what the heck were you thinking there? Right, right. All right, and then the next game I want to ask you about, Seattle, Carolina. You know, Seattle. Uh, two weeks in a row, two losses in a row. This line, though, has gotten bet up last week. You told us that the Sharps uh, came in on the Rams. Have they come in on Carolina this week as well? They have, yes. Uh, Sharp money came on Carolina plus five. Uh, we're sitting at, uh, sorry, five and a half. We're mm -hmm. sitting at Seattle minus five right now. Our total is 45. My count is about three to one in favor of Seattle, but my money's about two to one in favor of Carolina. Mm -hmm. I mean, Seattle's always going to get support. And again, you're talking about being a road favorite in the NFL. It's if your home field, what's it worth? Maybe three points. That's kind of like just the, the general number to throw out there. So the public's definitely throwing in, in for all their teasers and stuff like that. You know, you're just sitting at five right now. So no matter what kind of teaser you do, you're basically just saying they just have to win. Mm -hmm. So uh, public, a lot of support for Seattle. The sharp money I do have is on Carolina plus five and a half. Nothing on the total. All right, so definitive sharp money uh, on Carolina, and nothing came in on Seattle uh, sharp uh, on the opening line? No, not at all. Okay. And then the, uh, the third game I want to ask about is probably the most controversial line of the week, and that's Packers-Saints. And I've heard the opinion that, uh, you know, if the books wanted Saints action, that, uh, that they would have made the Saints a, uh, a home dog here, and that the line implies that maybe they'd prefer to have uh, Packers action. Right now, Saints are, are a tiny uh, home favorite. What's the action like on this game, Brent? It's interesting that you comments like that, like the books are going to want – Green Bay action, or we want you know New Orleans action. When we start out, we want to balance the, the action first off. Okay. When the sharps are coming in, we want to be on their side. So I know you've got the you know your your ear to the ground hearing about these conspiracy theories yeah. and setup games and stuff like that. We throw the number out. We want to balance action first off. All right. I'm just telling I'm just telling you what I hear and what people ask and what people say. That's it. It's an interesting game for sure. Uh, Sunday night game. You definitely want to. You, you're initially you want to you know side with the home team if they're an underdog. This is a case where we're sitting at two, two and a half. So it's, it's kind of a line that I think is still going to find its way. 
Um, we've got money that we respect on New Orleans when it was minus one and a half. We're sitting at either two or two and a half, bouncing back and forth but right now on this one. Um, our count, though, on Green Bay is about two and a half, maybe three to one. Uh, money slightly favors New Orleans, but that was pretty much because of the big initial bet, New Orleans minus one and a half. But uh, Green Bay is a, you know, a big public side in terms, in terms of teasers. Total, nothing to report. All right, well, it seems like uh, you know the books did get uh, lopsided action then on the Packers, not necessarily overwhelming, though. All right, Brett, that's all I wanted to uh, ask you about in terms of specific games. What can you tell us about notable action from uh, the rest of the card? I would say, I mean, if I had to nail one game as saying the sharpest play of the week, it would be the early action that came on Chicago. They're at yeah. New England. Uh, New England's a five-and-a-half-point favorite right now. Total is 50-and-a-half. But I got sharp money on Chicago, plus six-and-a-half and plus six. Right now, my count is pretty much dead even because, obviously, you know, New England's a team that a lot of public people like to support. Mm -hmm. uh, but my money is, so oh, it's almost like five to one in favor of Chicago. So that's, you know, that's really a strong play for, for the Sharps. And I got a couple of different guys. It's plus six and a half and plus six with Sharp, sharp with Chicago. So my money, like I said, about five to one count slightly favors New England. So that's kind of, you know, if I was going to tip off a, a sharp public split, this definitely would qualify. So the Bears are a sharp side. And another one is the people going against, uh, against Seattle, plus five and a half mm -hmm. with Sharp money for sure and Seattle's on the road we're down to five right now that could drop even further but Carolina plus five and a half sharp action there count still favors Seattle uh, money favors Carolina uh, Miami under the under there uh, Miami is at Jacksonville Miami spread is uh, minus six the totals down to 42 sharp action came under 43 there and Houston I mean this one's long gone but I, I you know I'm going to mention it anyway Houston minus one and a half at Tennessee with sharp action uh, line is all the way up to minus three minus 120 on Houston all one-sided action there I've got I mean it's the number of bets on Tennessee is, is I mean I can't the number so small I can't even see it real bad there wow. and uh, Oakland is another one Oakland at Cleveland Cleveland is a seven point favorite now it's seven Dog minus 20 right now when it was uh, Oakland plus 7 minus 05. Sharps came in on Oakland there. So Oakland's, you know, maybe not a, a great team that inspires a whole lot of faith, but uh, Cleveland, I mean, they, they just know that last week too. And you hear in the whispers about uh, Johnny football coming in. So that's an interesting one to look out for, for sure. Maybe not a marquee game, but I mean, if you can catch 7 on Oakland and late 10 or something like that, it looks like it's a real sharp play. So that, uh, that Houston action, that was sharp and public, one sided? That was sharp, and yeah, and public is, is gone as well. Obviously, the sharp money came when right, the line right. was minus one and a half. As soon as it got up to minus, you know, two and a half and three, it was public money coming in falling. All right, and then let's just quickly touch on teasers. That's always the uh, the one thing that can be really dangerous for you each week. This week looks uh, not that bad for you. I'm sure you probably uh, have a lot of uh, teaser action on Cleveland, but just scanning over the rest of the card, looks like in general uh, teasers don't look too dangerous for you this week. Yeah, no, I mean, Kansas City is one side that are getting a lot of support. Actually, this is Kansas City, I would call one of the pseudo sharp plays as well. I mean, I did have sharp money on Kansas City, minus six and a half. They're at home to St. Louis. Uh, Miami's another case like that where they're kind of a pseudo sharp play. That was minus five where the sharps came in there. But uh, Kansas City and Miami on teasers, Seattle on teasers, throw in Indy and Green Bay. Now, but won't sum it up. All right, Brent, thanks so much for all this awesome, awesome information. And we'll talk to you again next week. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.